This is a CBS News special report. I'm Charlie Rose with Nora O'Donnell and Gail King in New York. The first indictment from special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation have just been revealed. President Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, surrendered to authorities. His former associate, Rick Gates, also faces charges. Paula Reed is in Washington with new information on the charges. Paula, good morning. Good morning. The special counsel's office has just taken the unusual step of issuing a press release revealing that Paul Manafort and his business associate Rick Gates have been charged on 12 counts. They are conspiracy against the United States, conspiracy to launder money, and also several other counts related to failing to register as a foreign agent. Now there, you are supposed to register with the Justice Department if you are doing lobbying work on behalf of a foreign government. Now they are charging him for not doing that properly and also, it appears, for lying to the feds about his federal or his lobbying efforts. Now, again, it is a crime to lie to the federal government, so 12 counts. That gives Robert Mueller a lot to work with to try to force Manafort to potentially cooperate in the larger overall investigation into any cooperation between the Trump campaign and Russia. Paul, what more do we know about Richard Gates? We know that he's a longtime business associate of Paul Manafort. He was also involved in the campaign. But so far, sources really haven't told us much about any evidence about him that has been presented to the grand jury. But we know there has been extensive evidence about Paul Manafort, many of his business associates, uh, business documents that were taken from his home, other physical evidence has been presented to the grand jury about Paul Manafort. So it was expected that he would be the first to be indicted today. But Rick Gates, that is actually something new and somewhat unexpected. There's also this talk of being using prosecutorial tactics, which is to indict someone, bring charges, and then, in a sense, try to pressure them so that they will uh, indict somebody higher up on the chain. This process has been called in question here because uh, the president has pardon power and has suggested, or the suggestions are, that he might use that pardon power, and that'll make these people who have been charged less vulnerable to prosecutorial pressure. Absolutely. That's a real problem for Robert Mueller and probably why you're seeing such aggressive tactics. Over the summer, he used a no-knock warrant on Paul Manafort to obtain business records and other physical evidence that arguably he could have gotten if he had just asked the <coughs> lawyers. Then today, we're, we're seeing this very aggressive, very public 12-count uh, indictment against Manafort and his business associate. Robert Mueller knows there, there is a mixed incentive here for Paul Manafort to cooperate. So it appears he is trying to be as aggressive as possible, find any violations of federal law that will incentivize Paul Manafort and potentially others to cooperate in this larger investigation between the Trump campaign and Russia. All right, Paula, thank you. Our chief legal correspondent, Jan Crawford, is also in Washington. Jan, let's go through some of these 12 counts. The first, conspiracy against the United States. Tell us what that means. Well, I mean, first of all, at the outset, let me just follow up on what Paula was saying. When you look at all of these counts, it really shows kind of and it reflects on the team that Robert Mueller has assembled, former prosecutors, to kind of look at some of these alleged crimes. They are seasoned veterans. They're well experienced in dealing with financial crimes. And that's what we're looking at. When, when you start ticking through these allegations, these are related to failure to disclose, uh, laundering money. They're finding, you know, tens of millions of dollars that they are saying that he uh, hid or laundered through different com countries and companies. Uh, these are straightforward financial crimes and failure to disclose. What's notable is that there's no mention, at least in kind of flipping through, uh, you know, the tens of pages of these this uh, indictment so far, there's no outright direct tie to the Trump campaign. So, you know, it's important to keep in mind that, that Robert Mueller has wide-ranging authority here to investigate a lot of different things. Things. This is the beginning of the criminal case against Paul Manafort and Mr. Gates. Uh, it is the beginning. So we're going to see now, are they going to cooperate? How will they plead? What are they going to do? And will that spring open the investigation to move in other directions? Janet also says false statements and seven counts of failure to, to file reports of foreign bank and financial accounts. What does that mean exactly? Right. I mean, you can't lie about your reporting, um, uh, whether it's financial reporting, uh, deposits, moving money. Uh, on these forms, that's a crime. I mean, if you fail to disclose, if you uh, make uh, uh, inaccurate or, or false statements on any kind of federal forms, those are crimes. And like I said, these prosecutors that Mueller has assembled, they are very experienced in going after high level targets, executives, and corporations where there are financial, uh, uh, there's allegations of financial wrongdoing, which is what we're looking at here in this indictment. Jan, what was the purpose of 
Paul Manafort, or what is alleged is the purpose of him laundering this money from essentially pro-Russian interests. That's something that I think we're going to have to try to sift through today. And that's something that I'm sure uh, the special counsel has already been exploring. Uh, where does, how far does that go? How wide ranging is that? Was this designed solely to, to line the pockets of Paul Manafort? Uh, or did he have broader ambitions here? Did he have uh, any kind of motive when he signed on with the Trump campaign? Did the Trump campaign know about that? Were they involved in that? I mean, I mean this is kind of like when you just pull a thread. I mean, if you think about, uh, you know, you, you know you're sitting there with a blanket and you pull a thread, is it just going to kind of un, unweave itself now uh, as this investigation unfolds? Or is this going to be solely focused on the alleged financial wrongdoings of Paul Manafort and trying to like enrich himself personally well, and his associates? I mean, Those are the questions we're going to have to look at. Yeah, the, the, the firm that Paul Manafort ran for many years with Rick Gates and others, it is a lobbying firm, correct? Right, and that is something that you're supposed to. There are very clear rules on registering as a lobbyist. Uh, when you're working for foreign governments, uh, you have to, to file those kind of statements. So that's something that, that, you know, lobbyists should know and do. I know we're a long way from this, Jan, but if convicted, what kind of sentence do these kind of charges carry? It depends a lot, Gail, on the, the dollar figures that you're talking about and how long this happens. So it really is something that I mean, it, it could be significant. I mean, you see white collar uh, crime and, and people who are convicted of, of white collar crime getting, you know, lengthy sentences. Uh, but sometimes that's tied to the dollar amounts involved. When will, we, when will we find out about bail and, and where, what happens to him Well, now? Charlie, what should be happening right now as they're processing him is, is they're going to be setting conditions for his release. So uh, he, will he have to surrender his passport? Uh, what, what kind of bond is he going to have to post? Uh, will he have to agree to stay in the area? Those are all what you're called conditions for release, and that's what uh, probably is happening right now. And now that we know who will be charged, what, if anything, does it mean for President Trump and his administration? That is, that, I, that is I think, the the big question, right? I mean, as much of a potential crime as this is, and obviously it's terrible if people are trying to enrich themselves, uh, you know, in, in, in wrongful ways, uh, and that, that would be a crime, and therefore you're indicted for that, uh, which is what we're seeing now alleged here. The big question, though, why everyone is so focused on this is what does it mean for the president, the Trump campaign? And I think that's where you're going to try to see now, going forward, uh, did the campaign know about this? Did the president know about this? Was Paul Manafort and his associates kind of out there on a trip of their own? trying to enrich themselves or was there some broader uh, motive here that a lot of other people knew about that's what Robert Mueller is going to be getting to the bottom of right now whether or not Paul Manafort is going to be a cooperating witness at this point now that he's looking at a lengthy list of charges against him that's also something that we could see because sometimes these witnesses when they say we're not cooperating I mean it looks a lot different when you're sitting in an FBI field office saying turn over your passport you're going to be looking at 20 years in prison or whatever it may be they can change their mind pretty quickly, so we may see that, too. Yeah, this is all just beginning. Thank you very much, Jan. Let's go now to Margaret Brennan. She's at the White House, where so far there has not been a comment about these charges. Margaret, good morning. Good morning. That's right. The president often likes to comment in real time on breaking news, but today he is not doing so. Nothing from his Twitter account. We've asked the White House Communications Office and also gotten in touch uh, with the president's lawyer, Ty Cobb, to respond to these developments this morning, and they have not released any comments so far. Uh, but we can say that the White House has, in many ways, been bracing for this over the past few months, ever since it became clear that Paul Manafort was the subject of federal investigation. Uh, time after time from the White House, Podium. We have heard Sarah Sanders and before her, Sean Spicer, uh, run far and run fast from Paul Manafort, emphasizing that he worked as an unpaid advisor for a short period of time uh, and really emphasizing again and again that he didn't actually end up helping to win the election uh, or come here to the White House. So they are really trying to create distance. Also, uh, over the past few days, uh, Ty Cobb, the president's lawyer, has been uh, saying that the president himself will continue to uh, work with the special counsel, Robert Mueller. Are really trying to project this image that they are not worried here at the White House. Of course, the president's own tweets over the past few days suggesting that he is keeping an eye on the Russia news has somewhat contradicted that. All right, Margaret, thank you. I want to go back to Jeff Pegues, who has more details on this. And let me just say, Jeff, I know just like you, I am reading through uh, this indictment, and it's pretty stunning stuff, just the first couple of pages. I mean, that they had essentially, according to this indictment, funneled 70 five 
$1.5 million flowed through offshore accounts that Manafort laundered more than $18 million, which was used by him to buy property, goods, and services. I mean, that's just one paragraph in this huge document here. Mueller and his team are extraordinarily detailed. Well, and, and there is a paper trail, as we've discussed, and you, that's what you get when you have that those types of financial transactions. And, and this had been the talk uh, for some time, that Manafort had this type of legal vulnerability in that there are money flows to offshore accounts all over the place. And this is what our uh, law enforcement and intelligence sources have been telling us for some time now. But as you noted, Nora, to see this uh, come from the special counsel's office and these 12 counts and the one that as you know now, really stands out is conspiracy against the United States. Uh, and when you think about these charges now, uh, including the charge of uh, misleading FARA statements and uh, being an unregistered agent of a foreign principal, uh, you know, that's pretty significant too, because when you think about the people who've been under scrutiny here, you have Michael Flynn uh, and you have Carter Page, uh, people who have not been indicted today. Uh, and, and of course, Carter Page has said that this is a witch hunt. But when you think about the, the type of uh, issues they are facing legally, uh, this FARA charge uh, could, some say, apply to them. All right, Jeff Begay's more to come, certainly. Thank you so much. We expect more developments throughout this day. We'll bring you the details as they emerge. Nora? All right, coverage continues on your local news and on all day on our 24-hour streaming network, CBSN. And we'll have a complete wrap-up tonight on the CBS Evening News. Many of you will return now to CBS This Morning. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Charlie Rose with Gail King and Nora O'Donnell, CBS News, New York. For news 24 hours a day, go to C